Hey everyone, welcome. In today's lesson, I'm going to show you how to build your own 3D snake game on Hatch. For those of you who do not know, snake game used to be a very popular game in the early 90s and the early, early 2000s. And the way the game worked is, let me show you. So here I have the 3D snake game actually ready. So as you can see, the instructions say, click on the green play button to start and then click on the up, down, left or right arrow keys on the keyboard to move your snake and make it grow longer by eating more and more food objects. So let, let's see how this works. So I click on the green play button and then I can use the up, down, left, right arrow keys on my keyboard to move the snake. See? And as you can see, I'm able to move the snake towards this red food object that's there in the game. And every time my snake eats the food, you can see the tail of the snake grow longer. And then the food also appears in a new position. Right? And you can see that the score is also increasing. Also, you'll see now if I try to hit this hit the tail, hit my own tail, then the game is over. So this used to be the basic premise of the snake game that was uh, really famous in the early 90s. So uh, let's let's uh, build this game on Hatch, all, all right? So you can see there are lots of things happening in the game currently. So the, you were able to move the snake up, down, left and right. Then snake was colliding with the food object and food was appearing in a new position. And then every time the snake ate the food object, the tail of the snake grew longer and then if the snake hits its own tail, the game gets over. So there are a lot of components in this uh, game. We are going to be building this step by step. We are going to be building um, some of the basic functionalities first and then building the more complex functionalities later on. So most probably I'm going to be dividing this uh, project, this video, this tutorial into two parts. Part one is going to be the basic functionalities of the game like moving the snake up, down, left, right and collecting the food. And then part two will be uh, growing the snake's length as it eats more and more food and then adding the collision logic for snake hitting its own tail. All right, so let's start. So the very first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go to kids.hatchxr.com. So this is the completed project link and I will post the link of this completed project in the description of the video as well. So you guys can refer, refer to the game to the final output. But we are going to be starting with the with a new project so i go to kids.hatchxr.com and because i'm already logged in so it's opening up the student dashboard all right so here you can see there is a new project button here but i'm just going to close this final project link and let me log out of this win of my account so if you are not logged in if you're a new user on hatch then when you go to kids.hatchxr.com you will see this page this website and here also there will be a new projects button so just click on the new project button and this time we are going to start with an empty project template. So click on this plus sign here and now you can see that an empty 3D project has been created. Okay, so let me first full screen my window here. Okay, so the very first thing that we are going to do is we are going to create the design of our project. It's a very simple design so I wanted to show you guys some of the design elements of how the design space works in the hatch xr workspace as well so this in this project we are going to be creating the design of the project by ourselves as well so go to the design tab and now here you will see that we have some objects here so we have a box we have a sphere a cylinder okay and then we have a ground object this is the ground i'm just going to delete all of these objects and we are going to add our own design elements so let's start by selecting the box from here and then press the delete button on a keyboard. You see the box is deleted. So similarly, let's delete the sphere, cylinder and the ground as well. So sphere is already selected. Let's press the delete button. Sphere is deleted. Now delete the cylinder and then similarly delete the ground. So select your ground and then click on delete. So now you see my scene is completely empty. Okay. So the very first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to add a background. I'm going to add a background. So I'm going to add like a sky in my project. So what I will do is I'll go to my add 3D objects button here. Click on the add 3D objects button. And then on the bottom section here, select your environments category. Here, now you will see that there is a gradient sky option. Click on the gradient sky pr property here. And you see a sky object has been added to your game. This looks really cool. 
now your sky object is already selected and in the properties panel let's scroll down and you will see that there is a materials property for your sky so the colors of the sky right and by default you see the shading effect it says three colors and then there are three colors here that are defining how your sky is going to look what i'm going to do is click on this three color gradient option here and you will see that there is an atmosphere option as well so real sky real world sky is the atmosphere so click on atmosphere here and now you see there is a very empty sunset looking sky like sunrise or sunset looking sky here see right what i'm going to do is in the atmosphere now you see there are new properties of the sky so there is a sun position and sun position in x y and z so what i'm going to do is i'm going to in make the sun like go up in the sky so that the sky has like a midday color okay so you see the y position of the sun let's just make it 10 and now you see the sky looks like it's somewhere in the midday range right okay so i have my background of the game ready let's add a background let's add a background for on which the snake can move okay so what i'm going to do now is i'm going to click on the add 3d objects button again and this time i'm going to click on basic objects category on the bottom here so when you click on basic objects you get simple 3d objects that you can add into your scene and i'm going to add a box so click on this box and you will see that a box object has added into your scene right so you see there is a purple box uh, you the color of the box would be different for you when you add the box as well so a box is added in the, into the game so the very first thing I'm, i want to do now is i want to place this box at the center of my project okay so what i mean by center of the project is when you click on the box object here you can see the properties of the box object and your box will have some position so there are going to be three position values position in x position in y and position in z we are going to set the set all of these numbers to zero and that will place my box at the center of the scene so click on this first position number here the x number and type zero press enter click on the y number here type zero press enter and then click on the z number here type zero press enter so now you can see that this box is at the center of the game now let's increase the size of this box i want the snake to be moving on top of this box okay so this is going to act like my ground for the snake the arena for the snake so let's increase the size of the box you can increase the size of the box by again selecting your box object and if you scroll down in, in its properties there is a geometry property that contains the width of the box the height of the box and the depth of the box so let's make its width 50 you see now the box is really wide yeah and similarly i select the box again and i make its height also 50 and now i have a very wide a very large box this will work as the background of my game okay so now what i'm going to do is i'm going to add a texture to my background this scene here so to add a texture to the background scene there are multiple things you can do so first of all you'll have to log into your account to add textures okay to add your own image textures so let me first log into my account here all right so you can see now i'm logged into my account now in the box object in your box objects properties if you scroll down you will see that there is a texture property see there is a material section and in the material section there will be a texture property with a plus sign here so if you click on the plus sign you will see there are some images there would be different images appearing for you depending on how well how much you have been using hatch but uh, what you can do is you can there would be different textures so by default there would be some textures already provided so there would be some wooden textures that you can use all by on your own or what you can do is you can download some images from the internet like search for like this black and white checkerboard or green checkerboard that you see here so i have downloaded some images from the internet okay and i have added that here what i can do is i can also 
provide this so i'm going to use this green checkerboard image from here so i click on the plus sign and you see the background has the image texture now okay what i will do is i'll provide the link of this uh, texture image in the description of the video as well so you can download the image and then once the image is downloaded on your system you can click on this upload button and then select an image from your system here see i have the image here so when you when i click on this image it will be uploaded to my system to my hatch workspace here and then you can click on the plus sign to add the image okay so once the image is added now the image is uh, very big right now and i want the image to be like a chessboard like let's lots of lots of uh, dark and light green squares like a checkerboard effect okay so to to make that happen what i can do is i can modify this repeat texture property see it says repeat texture one and one let me make it 20 and 20. now you see my checkerboard effect the my texture is basically repeated all over this box 20 times 20 times along the x and 20 times along the y so it looks really good now it gives a checkerboard effect here so i'm happy happy with this uh, texture that i have what i'm also going to do is i'm going to there is this roughness property in the properties of my box i'm going to increase the roughness to one to make it look more uh, realistic all right so my background of the game is ready one thing you will notice here is this camera this camera is inside the box right, right now so let's select our player object from here so the camera is inside our player player is basically you in the game how you will be seeing the game okay so let's select the player object and let's make its Z position, let's say 5 or 10. All right. And yes, so now you can see the player is in front of the box and it's looking at the box. Okay, so we have our background uh, set up. Now let's add another box that will work as our snake. Okay, so to do that, let's go to add 3D objects again and click on the basic object section okay so once i have selected the basic objects category here let's add another box so click on this box object and now you will see a box two another box has been added to my game and i can you can see that i can't see the new box here because my box is placed behind this uh, green checkerboard that i have added okay so let's select our box two and do the same thing let's place it at the center of the scene first of all so let's place it at 0 in the x value, 0 in the y, and 0 in the z. So now my box is at the center. Let's make it z position, let's say 1 unit. And now you can see that I have a box here. I have a new box here. Okay. For those of you who are wondering this, how did I remove this grid here, I am pressing the G button on the keyboard to turn on and off this grid that is visible here so you can turn on and off this grid by pressing the G button on your keyboard okay so now this is this this box the second box that I have added this is going to work as my snake box okay so first things first let's name our snake box snake so here on the left side where it says box 2 you can click on the three dots and then you will see some menu options click on rename and then type snake press enter and now your this this second box that you have added its name has become snake here okay so now let's uh, do one more thing the size of the snake is very large now we are going to be as we play the game what we are going to do is we are going to increase the length of the snake's tail right so the initial size of the snake box let's have it as a small object so what i'm going to do is select your snake box and in its geometry property width height and depth what i can do is let's set its width height and depth to 0 0.3 0 0.3 0 0.3 and 0 0.3 here okay so now you can see i have a very small snake at the beginning of my game right and the snake is not very clearly visible so what i can do is first of all i can make its color white in color so select your snake object and scroll down in its properties and there would be a color option here in the material section select the color and make its color white 
okay now the snake is more clearly visible now you can see the snake is uh, floating above the this box this background box that we have added so what we can do is we can just move our box slowly and place it on top of my background box right so you can see when i placed my snake box on top of my background box the z position of my snake is 0 0.65 so 0 0.65 will make the snake just stand on top of this green box that we have in the background okay so our snake box is ready let's do another thing so let's add the red food object okay so what i'm going to do is you can click on the snake object here and then click on the three dots and this time you will see we will click on this second option here that says clone clone basically duplicates an object creates a copy of an object in the same position so when i click on clone here you will see a snake two box has been added and this snake two box is in the same position with the same color and same size as the original snake box so you can't see two different snake boxes in the game but my game is telling me that that there are two different snake boxes here so snake and snake two what i can do is click on my snake two object and this time let's move it to the right side now you see as i drag the snake two box to the right side you can see the original snake box stays here the original snake box is this white box and this snake 2 is the one on the right side now right so snake 2 let's make its uh, x position let's say 4 at the beginning of the game okay and what we can do is let's uh, make the snake 2 this first of all let's rename, rename the snake 2 to food and then change the color of the food object to red okay so what i did was i selected my the snake two box and then first of clicked on the three dots clicked on rename and then renamed snake two to food okay and then i selected my food object and then change its color to red okay so we have the basic setup of the game ready one modification that i want to do is uh, you will see that if you click on the player object the camera is not looking at the snake it's looking slightly above the snake so this white line that is emitting from the camera this is telling you what the camera is looking at initially okay and you can see the white line is slightly above the snake object that is because the camera you will see camera's y position is 1.6 so it's 1.6 units above i know the snake's y position is zero right so camera is slightly above the snake object so what we can do is set the y position of the camera to zero as well and now you see the camera is looking straight at the snake object okay so the basic premise of this is done and uh, one more thing let's select our player object and what i'm going to do is in, the, in our code we are going to move the snake up down left and right using the arrow keys on the keyboard but uh, in a uh, general in normal 3d games what happens is your arrow keys on the keyboard also helps you move the player right and here if you select the player object you will see that player motion has this free motion category selected so what this does is if you go to the play tab then if you press the up down left or right arrow keys you see the player is also player is moving towards the snake far away from the snake when you press up and down arrow keys and it's moving left and right with the left and right arrow keys so player is moving uh, using the up down left right arrow keys right so what we want to do is we want to disable the player's motion completely so let's go to the design tab and this time select your player object and in, in its player motion property select the none so now we are disabling the motion of the player player will not be moving using the up down left right arrow keys so we can directly code the motion of snake using the up down left right arrow keys okay cool and there is also a cursor object here let's make the cursor object invisible this is just something i want to do because uh, if you go to the game here if you click on the play tab you will see there is this blue circle here there is this black circle here that keeps on following you wherever you are going and it's just uh, when I'm not going to be using any cursor functionality in my code here. 
so i don't need the cursor and if i don't need the cursor i tend to hide the cursor from the game itself so i'm back in my design tab click on my cursor object here and this visible property just remove this check mark from here and the cursor will become invisible now okay so cool our basic design is ready now let's go to the code window and let's start coding the snake game okay so go to the code let's click on the code tab here awesome so we are in our code window and you can see there's no code so there is just this when green play button click block okay so now uh, since you want to uh, we let's first make the snake move using up down left right arrow keys okay so to make an object move what do we do we uh, since it's a, it's a 3d game it's a 3d game and it's a 3d space so you saw in the design section in the design tab that every object like even if you click on the snake object here, you see its position is defined by three values, X, Y, and Z, right? And we know that if you increase the X value, the snake moves to the right side. If you decrease the X value, the snake moves to the left side, see? If you increase the Y value, the snake is moving up. If you decrease the Y value, the snake is moving down, okay? So to move the snake up, down, left and right, what we are going to do is we are going to change its X and Y positions again and again, constantly. Okay. So let's go to the code tab and let's do that. So uh, again, because we want to change the X and Y position of the snake object. So I'm going to create two variables. One is going to control the speed in the X direction of the snake. And second variable is going to control the speed in the y direction of the snake. Okay. So on the in the code window, go to your top left section here, global section, and scroll down here. You will see there is a section called variables. So click on variables. And this time, first of all, we are going to create a variable. Okay. So click on create a variable button. And let's start with creating a variable called x speed. Okay. X speed. Now, in general, when you're coding, we don't create variables with uh, space in them. Okay, so I'm saying x underscore or x hyphen. You can use symbols while naming a variable as well. So underscore is good. Underscore is common enough in coding language while giving variables name. So I'm giving the variable the name x underscore. This is underscore. This is underscore. Okay, a small line at the bottom is called underscore. Or you can just uh, just say x capital S speed, okay, x speed, like this, and click on create. So our x speed variable is created. Now let's create another variable called y speed. So y speed, okay. Now let's drag out this set variable y speed, and then duplicate this. Sorry, duplicate this and change one of the blocks to x speed. So set variable x speed and set variable y speed. And what we are going to do is we are going to set both of the x and y speed to zero at the beginning of the game. So when the game starts, we don't want uh, the snake to be moving. So we are going to set x and y speed to zero and zero. So how do we get the zero block? You can, again, on the in this top left section, scroll up and go to the math category here. And you will see that when you click on the math category, there is a number block that appears, right? Or what you can do is directly inside the workspace, if you press shift and M on your keyboard, a number block will be given to you directly. So again, press shift and M and another number block is generated. So we are doing set variable X speed to zero and set variable Y speed to zero. Okay. So now, what we are going to do is when the green play button is clicked, that is when the game's, game is going to start in our code, in our in this game, okay? So when the green play button is clicked, what we want to do, we want the snake to move in the X and Y directions based on its X and Y speed value, right? So to do this, on the bottom left section, click on your snake object. And now you can see the blocks that are that are available for your snake, right? So here, if you scroll down, you will see there is a block called set snake x. Actually, we don't need set snake x. Scroll up, and in the top section itself, there is a block called change snake x by one. 
this change snake x by 1, we are going to use this block. Okay, so we drag this out, attach it here. And so by default, what does this do? What, what does change snake x by 1 does? So see, when I click this, this code here says, when the green play button is clicked, change the snake's x position by 1. So this means that every time you click on the green play button, you can see that the snake's x position keeps on increasing by 1. So, and we know that increasing the x position means the snake will move to the right side. So that's what's happening. Yeah. What you can do is you can also try changing this 1 to let's say 0 0.4. Now, if you click on the green play button, the snake will move slightly to the left side. It won't be jumping that far, right? So, in this change snake x by is making the snake move left or right by this number. If this number is positive, then the snake will be moving to the right side. And if this number is negative, let's say minus 0 0.4, then every time you click on the green play button, see? the snake is moving to the left side. So if this number is negative, then the snake will move to the left side. Okay. So this is what we are going to be controlling with our X speed variable. What we can do is let's reload our game here and say, change the snake X by the X value of X speed. So go to variables here, drag out this X speed block and place it here. So when the green play button is clicked, change the snake's X position by X speed. So now when you click on the green play button, you see nothing is happening. Why is nothing happening? Because the X speed of the snake variable is zero. So basically we're saying change the X by zero and zero is not going to have any effect in its position. All right. But similarly, let's also duplicate this block and this time say change the snake's Y position by Y speed. Okay. So now, let's see, let me show you. Again, if you click on the green play button right now, nothing will happen because both X and Y speed is zero and zero. Let's set the Y speed to 0 0.4. Now what will happen? When you click on the green play button, what should happen? See, the value of X speed is still zero. So snakes change X by X speed will not make the snake move left or right here because X speed is zero, okay? but the, this change snake y by y speed. So see, we have these two blocks, right? Change snake by x speed. This block is there to make the snake move left or right. Okay. And this block is there to make the snake move up or down, depending on the value of x speed and y speed variable. So when x speed is zero, snake will not move in the left or right direction. When y speed is zero, snake will not move in the up or down direction. But when Y speed is a positive number, like right now, then snake will move in the up direction. If Y speed now is a negative number, then the snake will move in the downwards direction. When Y speed is zero and X speed is a positive number, 0 0.4, then snake will move in the right direction. And Y speed zero and X speed minus 0 0.4 x speed is a negative number, then the snake will move in the left direction. What will happen when x and y speed both have some numbers? So let's say x is 0 0.4, set the x speed to 0 0.4 and set the y speed to 0 0.4 as well. So now see, change snake x by x speed, this will make the snake move to the right side because x speed is a positive number 0 0.4, right? And change snake y by y speed, y speed is also a positive number. So this will make the snake move up. So this block will make the snake move right. And this block will make the snake move up. As a result, what will happen is snake moves diagonally up. So it's combining the right and the up motion together to make the snake move diagonally up. Because both of these x and y speed are positive numbers currently. Okay. So this in uh, this project, we are not dealing with diagonal motion. So don't worry about what happens when X and Y speed are both having some values. We are just going to set it to zero for now. And in today's in this project, we are going to just be covering single motion. So uh, motion in just one specific direction, direction. 
uh, either in the x direction or in the y direction okay so let's reload this game now so one thing that's happening here is the snake to move the snake here i have to click on the green play button again and again and that is not the ideal way to play ideal way to play the game right we want that the moment the game starts i want the snake to keep on moving on its own so to do that what i can do is i can use a forever block so again in the top left section here click on loops and timers and then you will see there is a block called forever you can drag this block out and what we can do is we can say that change the snake x and y by x speed and y speed value this should keep on happening forever the moment the green play button is pressed okay so now let's let me just make the x speed to 0.4 to make the snake move in the right direction and now if i click on the green play button see snake moved to the right side and it keeps on moving it moved very fast what i want to do is i want to reduce the speed of the snake moving Yeah, so I want to reduce the speed with which this, with which the snake was moving. So what I can do is there are multiple ways we can in which we can do this. What I want to show you is the use of wait block right now. So if you click on loops and timers here, you will see that there is a wait block. Wait two seconds. We are going to use this. So what's happening currently is forever block runs at a very fast speed. So it's running this block these two blocks again and again at a very fast speed. as a result what's happening is the snake moves in a very fast speed here what we can tell our computer is don't run the forever block at a fast speed run this once and then wait for let's say 1 second okay and then run this these two blocks again so now if you click on the green play button you will see the snake is not moving at a very fast speed it's moving one step to the right side after every 1 second okay it's waiting for 1 second before moving the next time next time all right so this 1 second 1 second is also a very large time though so what i am going to do is i am going to just uh, let's try 0.1 let's try a smaller value here and let let's click on the green play button okay this is uh, 0.1 second is uh, slightly fast so what i'm going to do is i'm going to increase this to so 0.2 and let's see how does that look yeah i like 0.2 0.2 seems good okay uh i think i can try 0.15 as well it's a, the numbers here is completely up to you how long you want the snake to wait before moving depends on how fast you want your snake to be moving so yeah 0.15 seems like a good number for me so i'm going to use 0.15 okay so now let's uh, set the variable x speed back to 0 at the beginning of the game Okay, so what we want to do is we want to move the snake up, down, left, and right using the arrow keys on the keyboard. And the way to do that is we are going to use the keyboard button press block. So to bring out those blocks, we click on the events section on the top left here. And now, here if you scroll down, you will see that there is a block called when space key pressed. Let's drag this block outside. Okay, so when space key pressed, and if you see here, if you click on the space key drop down, you can see the list of all the buttons, all the alphabets and numbers available on your keyboard. So you can use any of these. I'm going to use the up arrow, down arrow, left arrow, and right arrow blocks right now. So let's start with the up arrow. So when up arrow key is pressed, what do we want to happen when the up arrow key is pressed? We want the snake to move up, and to move the snake in the up direction what do we want to do we need to make this y speed variable a positive number yes so let's duplicate this block and set variable y speed to let's say a positive number so let's say 0.35 let's try 0.35 okay now because we want the snake to be only moving in the up direction uh, when the snake is uh, when the up arrow key is pressed so the x speed of the way of the snake should stay zero okay only the y speed should become a positive number so when the up arrow key is pressed 
the y speed is a positive number and the x speed is zero, then the snake will only move in the up direction, right? Let's, let's see if it works or not. So I click on the green play button now. And now if I press the up arrow key, see, snake is moving in the up direction. Awesome. So now let's uh, add the functionality for all the other keys. So this is going to be very easy. You can just right click on the when up arrow key press block and select duplicate. Okay. Now what we can do is we can select when down arrow key here. And for down arrow, we know that to move the, when we press the down arrow key, we want the snake to move down. And if it's moving down, what we need to do is we need to make the Y speed a negative number. So let's say minus 0 0.35 and the x speed can stay zero all right so let's let's try this out click on the green play button and up arrow is making the snake move up down arrow is making the snake move down awesome reload the game and now let's uh, write the functionality for left and right arrow keys so simple again duplicate the when up arrow key pressed block and here you can select left arrow now and we know that if you want to make the snake move to the left side, you have to decrease the X value, the X position of the snake. And that means the X speed has to be a negative number. And because the snake should not be moving in the up down direction, so Y speed has to be zero. So when the left arrow key is pressed, set variable Y speed to zero and set variable X speed to a negative number. So let's say minus 0 0.35. Okay. And similarly, we can duplicate this when left arrow key pressed block. Sorry. Yeah, you can duplicate the when left arrow key pressed block and change this left arrow to right arrow. So when right arrow key pressed, we want the snake to move to the right direction. So the variable Y speed will remain zero and the variable X speed should become a positive number. So not minus 0 0.35, but just 0 0.35 and press enter. So now when I click on the green play button and run my code, if you, if I press the up arrow key, my snake moves up. If I press the down arrow key, my snake moves down. If I press the left arrow key, my snake moves left. And if I press the right arrow key, my snake moves right. Awesome. This is really cool. Yes. I'm able to control the snake's movement. Cool. So click on reload here and now let's code the functionality of what happens when the snake collides with the food object. Okay. So what we can do is here on the bottom left section, click on your snake object and scroll down, scroll down and you will see that there is a block called when snake collides with, right? So we're going to use this block, drag this block outside and what we need to do, what we need to do what we need to do here is when the snake collides with food, right? So we have to say the food name here. Click on the food category, click on the food object here on the left side, and you will see the list of food blocks. And just the top block is the name of the food object. So drag this outside and attach it here. So when snake collides with food, then what should happen? We want the food to move to a new position, right? So click on your food and here now scroll down, scroll down and you will see there is a block called set food X to one, right? Just drag this out and place it inside the block and duplicate this and place it another time changing X to Y. So we want the food to move to a new position in the game. So we want to change the X position of the food and the Y position of the food to some random number, a, ra a random number that even we do not know of. Okay. So what we are going to do is we're going to delete this one from here and this one from here. Now to, ch to change the X and Y position of the food to some random number, we need to bring out the random number block. The, the random number block is available in the math category again. So in the left section, click on your math category. And if you scroll down here, there is a block called random number from one to hundred. Okay. Let's drag this out and you can 
place it inside set food x block yeah set food x so when the snake collides with food set the x position of the food to a random number between 1 and 100 and similarly bring out another random number block and place it inside the set food y block so when the snake collides with food set the food y to a random number between 1 and 100 so now this random number between 1 and 100 is going to be a very large range and we know that uh, the positive x value is on the right side right so 1 to 100 might end up making my food go ve appear very far away on the right side and this 1 to 100 in the y also might make the snake might make the food appear very far up in the sky and i don't want those very large numbers here so what we can do is we can set these to uh, you know slightly smaller numbers so and because all and because the uh, snake can also move to the left side and down so the starting number here doesn't have to be a positive number so what we can do is set the food's x position to let's say from minus 6 to 6 okay and similarly set the food's y position from minus 6 to 6 and now if you see when i click on the green play button i press the up down left right arrow keys to move the snake and see my snake whenever it collides with the food the food appears in a new position and it the food is either moving up down left or right anywhere on its own okay cool so this was the basic functionality of the game let's also add one thing let's add the score functionality in this session and then and then in the next video we are going to cover the functionality of increasing the tail of the snake's length okay so let's add score to add score what we can do is let's go to the design section here and we are going to add a 2d text so let's click on this add 3d objects category add 3d objects button and click on the text category here so now you have the option of adding a 2d text or a 3d text okay you can choose whatever you want i'm going to add a 2d text and there are different fonts you can choose i'm selecting this font here click on the plus sign and a 2d text has been added again the 2d text might not be initially visible because it might be behind this green box that we have in the game so what we will do is first of all set the position of this text to the object that we have added so to set the position let's first bring the text to the center so x position 0 y position 0 and z position let's set it itself z position to 1 and now you see i can see that there is a 2d text in my game see okay so let's set the y position let's set the text's y position to somewhere around 6 okay because we know that the snake will not move any snake's y position in our code its maximum y position is going to be 6 because we are saying in our code that set the food's y position to a random number between minus 6 and 6 so the food will not move beyond this y position of 6 okay so that's why i'm setting the y position of my this text object to 6 so that it is just above the maximum value of the food of the food's position and when you click on the text 2d object in its properties you will see there is a value property where you can define what text is going to be visible so here i'm going to say score colon space and zero so i want this text to be visible and if you scroll down we can change the color of text to whatever we want so i'm i'm liking this uh, bright red color so i'm going to keep this bright red color okay cool so i have score zero and let me rename this text 2d to something else so i'm going to rename it to, to scoreboard so click on your text 2d object here click on the three dots click on rename and type scoreboard okay so now what we can do is go to our code window and first of all we have to create a score variable that will keep on counting how many times the snake has eaten the food 
all right so what we will do is let's go to the variables category here and click on create a variable this time call the variable score okay so set the variable score value to zero at the beginning of the game set variable score to and then go to math zero okay at the beginning of the game set variable score to zero now what we want to do is anytime the snake collides with the food we want to increase the score by one so go to your variable section again and click on change score by one and drag this out here so once the score has increased now we need to display the score in this text here so to do that we are going to click on our scoreboard object here on the left panel and here because it's a text object so you will find a block called set scoreboard text to okay so let's drag this out and place it just after changing the score by one okay now here we want the score number to be visible in place of this number zero here right but we also want this score word to be visible as well so what we are going to do is we are going to go to our text object text text category on the top left section here and then there is a block called join with two empty options here two empty spaces here so let's drag out this join block place it here okay and we are going to join the score word with the score variable number okay so we are going to click on the text object here again and drag out this very first block the green block with the empty quotation marks drag this out and place it at the very first empty space here type the score word s c o r e colon and space okay so that's this score word okay and then after the score word we want to display the number that is being counted in the score variable here so go to the variables option and bring out the score number and place it here so now let's see when i click on the green play button you will see that every time my snake eats the food the food is moving to a new position and the score of my game is increasing how awesome is that okay this is cool so this is done this is the so we, we can end our tutorial here all right we can end this session here and we are going to continue from this point onwards in our next tutorial where we are going to cover the functionality of as the snake eats more food the length of the snake is increasing and if the snake hits its own body hits its own tail then the snake dies and the game is over okay so yeah we have built the basic uh, simple snake game functionality in this session and this is this will work for your step one of the snake game okay don't forget to publish your project here give your project a name click on the publish button and your project will be published and it will also you you will also receive some xp for publishing this project depending on what is your daily streak and your project will also be eligible for the project of the day contest for the day it is published okay so share, share your projects get as many upvotes as possible and if you have received maximum number of upvotes and maximum number of views then your project will be awarded the project of the day award for the day okay and uh, you will receive 100 xp for if your project is awarded for the day okay awesome cool see you guys in the next session then bye bye